This is Nick. This is Jack. It's Monday, April 25th. This is the best one yet. Today's pod is a TBOY. It's a T-boy, baby. For our first story, two years ago, we told you Tesla was like a young avocado tree. Well, Jack and I've got an update. Tesla's avocado tree, it's bearing some fruit. For our second story, the gap. The stock plummeted 18% on Friday like they lost a thread. Old Navy is out because it has a new ROI. For our third and final story, Steinway and Sons is IPOing after 169 years of making grand piano. It's the IPiano, baby. But the highlight of Steinway is a self-playing piano. Can you repeat that one? A self playing ghost piano. One more time, baby. No, I no, can't we can, do it. We can, we can go on. We can move but on. Snackers, before we hit that wonderful mix. Uh, Jack, 15 years ago, you and I, college roommates. Nick, uh, 10 years ago, we started a company to make business news more digestible for our generation. Three years ago, we sold that company, Market Snacks, to Robin and Hood. And that became the Snacks Daily Podcast that you've been indulging in daily. But here's the thing. Right now, Jack and I have got a entrepreneurial itch. An entrepreneurial itch that no dose of thytastrosol can cure. Snackers, we've got big news to share. We're taking this podcast independent. Nick and I are going back to our entrepreneurial roots. Today's pod is the best one yet, so we're rebranding the entire podcast as the best one yet. That's the name of the pod. And we're putting 100% of ourselves into this podcast because we're going to be doing this podcast for the next 40 years. Jack, when Apple hits $10 trillion and Zuck Zuck's Peloton, we'll be covering When we're it. 70, the T-boy energy will sustain us. Now, the Robin Hood Snacks newsletter, our old baby, it's going to continue, but without us. This podcast will continue with just us. So you don't have to change a thing, Snackers. We'll still be with you every single day right here as usual. That's right. For you, the Snackers, this pod will be the same but better. Same story, same takeaways, same 15 minutes, but better. Guac? Still extra. New Slam and Salmon logo? Better. And starting today, you'll also get video versions of this pod on YouTube and social media every day. And weekly live chats so we can actually talk to you and answer your questions. Next up, we're dropping the best merch yet. The T-Boy crew neck isn't available yet, but it's top of our to-do list. Now, here's what's different about this pod. We're not part of Robin Hood anymore, so Jack... We need to make some money. Yeah. So we're reintroducing ads. So we're thrilled to debut our exclusive sponsor, Robin Hood. It's a great fit. So you'll hear Robin Hood ads in this pod. And like the rest of the podcast industry, we love our sponsors. But we'll cover Robin Hood news, just like we cover any other company's news. Same editorial treatment for all. Being a part of Robin Hood the last few years has been huge for us personally and for this podcast. So a big thank you to Robinhood for all the support. Honestly, it's been a pretty wild journey, and it's pretty cool how they're supporting us in this new stage. Oh, and one more thing. We got a new jingle. We got a new jingle. So get this. Two rapping snackers from Texas, they just happen to be fans of this podcast. They're actually professionals, though. So they whipped up some new ear candy for you. We're talking the first pod jingle with Grammy potential. Snackers, thank you for supporting us every single day. Oh, and by the way, the term snackers, we're going to need to come up with a new name to call it. We're working on a new term for this. We're working on a new term for that. So thank you for being a part of the best one. Now it's really a T-boy. Jack, let's hit our three stories. We're back, So here comes man bigger and better. Years before this song, two boys from the northeast met in the dorm. They had an idea to cause a cultural storm. It's the best one yet, but the best is the norm. Jack, Nick, that's it. I don't even think they need to practice. 50%, that's a fat tip. T Boy City on your at list. If you know, you know, cause we ready to go. We can't wait no more, so just start the show. Start the show. Start the show. For our first story, Tesla's profits jumped by, get this. 7X last quarter. But we need to update you about Tesla's young avocado tree. Okay, honestly, Jack, we could have done a story today on like anything about Elon. It could have been all Elon. Okay, Elon found somebody to pay for his Twitter acquisition. There you go. You got to get the money. And his other company, the Boring Company. Yeah, great name. Raised $5 billion. No, they didn't raise $5 billion. Good point. They hit a $5 billion valuation. But Jack and I were looking at our whiteboard and we said, you know what? We're going to cover... Tesla's earnings. Because Tesla just had their best performance ever by far. Uh, Tesla's revenues grew by how much from last year, please? They grew 81% in the last quarter because Tesla sold over 310,000 cars in just three months. Everyone else in the car business is like begging tech companies for their leftover computer chips. Please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> like the beanie babies <laughs> of tech right now. Meanwhile, Elon has plenty of chips, apparently, and 
that's important because he's not selling cars. He's selling computers that roll on wheels. And the car companies are desperate. Meanwhile, right Tesla opened up two new factories last quarter in Austin and in Berlin. But here's what Jack and I find fascinating about this story. The most shocking part isn't the chips, isn't the car sales. It isn't the humanoid robot that Elon's working Apparently, on. Apparently, Tesla's working It's on. a real thing. It's <laughs> the profits. Profits jumped at Tesla by seven times compared to the same quarter last year. You can, like, smell the burned <laughs> vegan rubber, Jack. And that was $3.3 billion of profits in just three months for Tesla. We repeat, that is seven times more profits from last year. Now, the Tesla Model Y Ooh. has become Tesla's profit puppet. Yes, it has. And we got to this podcast studio in a Tesla Model we Y. Full disclosure, yeah. And it's... they raised the price of the Model Y, this SUV-ish electric car, by 30% over the past year. And people are still buying yeah. it. Yeah. I'm still buying it. Inflation's not price a out. concern for Model Y buyers. It was, it was a little frustrating. Now, it feels, though, based on all this news, that we need to update our Tesla avocado tree analogy. Jack, that's a perfect transition point. So, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over Tesla? Tesla is a mature avocado tree. It's bearing fruit. Okay, our favorite pod from 2020, Jack, it was the Tesla is a young avocado tree pod. Tesla was producing a tiny fraction as many cars as Ford and General Motors were, but Tesla was worth more than Ford and General Motors combined. And that's why you and I said in 2020, Tesla is a young avocado tree. We had to find the analogy and Tesla is a young avocado tree was that analogy. Yeah, it wasn't bearing much fruit, but Tesla was young and boy, did it have potential? Boy, did that Tesla tree have potential. Well, today, Tesla's not some young avocado tree anymore. Tesla is bearing fruit. Meanwhile, General Motors and Ford, they were old orange trees. They had tons of fruit, but they were past their peak. Well, now Tesla is more profitable than Ford or GM. Because Tesla is a mature avocado tree. It's bearing fruit. It's bearing fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is avocado a fruit? Oh, a correction to this pod. Read so For our second story, the Gap, the Gap stock just plummeted by 18%. Because Old Navy is out. Influencing is in. Okay, Gap is the official uniform of, it's 1996 and my mom made me wear this. G-A-P. Jack, no Gap hoodie. No Cheez-Its. The Gap to me actually means 16 Husky jeans. Not a great chapter. No one's judging. The Gap is already a publicly traded stock worth $5 billion, which is about a third of a lift. But the Gap just went full slim fit on all of us. The stock sadly fell 18% on Friday because of some sad news. Okay, Jack, something is wrong with the Gap's hero brand. You might not realize it, but Old Navy historically has been a majority of sales at The Gap. The Gap is really an old Navy company because The Gap owns, they own Banana Republic, they got Athleta, and they got The Gap, but... Old Navy is the favorite child. Old Navy is the favorite child. Gap's only driver of growth the past several years has been that $7 American flag t-shirt at Old Navy. Classic, low price, high growth. Low price, high growth. But The Gap just went through a shocking reversal. Old Navy sales fell last quarter, while the Gap and Athletic grew last quarter. It got so bad that the Gap actually just fired Old Navy CEO. It's pretty bad. And the Old Navy CEO is out because in the past year, the Gap's strengths have transformed. Transformed from Old Navy to influencers. For instance, look at the new Kanye line at the Gap. Can we talk about the new Kanye line, An Jack? An $80 Yeezy hoodie. Thick cotton. It's a thick cotton. For those Chai Town wind chills. It, it is a thick cotton. My brother has one. I wore it in like 14 degree weather. I was still warm. You were schwitzing. I was schwitzing. And the Yeezy hoodie was the fastest and best selling item in Gap's entire history. Okay, that's the Yeezy line. Jack, can we talk about the new Simone Biles Simone deal? Biles was sponsored by Nike. The dream of every athlete is to be sponsored like Michael Jordan by Nike. Okay, that's the dream, but Simone Biles quit on Nike last year. We've never seen this Unprecedented. before. Unprecedented. Because she went into the arms of Athleta. Yeah. The Gap's athleisure brand. Just last week, Simone Biles, the gymnast, launched her own activewear line with Athleta. And so did Alicia Keys, actually. Alicia Keys. We're talking a New York-born <laughs> singer, songwriter, legend with the Grammys. Because playing the piano is a sweat activity, yeah. I doubt. She now has an athleisure line. This jumpsuit's on fire! At... 
the Gaps <laughs> Athleta. So, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies wheeling and dealing over at the Gap? We have a new definition of ROI. It's return on influence. Okay, Jack and I are not talking about return on investment. We're talking about return on influence. The Gap's numbers are proving how influencer investments can pay off in big sales. Get this. You're going to sit down, stand up, sit back down again. One half of the Gap's new customers are driven by inspirational marketing like those influencer deals. When Simone Biles starts posting about Athleta, that led to significant pickup in store sales, according to the CEO. Half of their new customers, these kind of things. Not Instagram ads, not 60% off deals like no. J. Crew, no. not window shopping at the mall. No. Influencers with their own gap lines, that's what's driving growth at the gap. So, Jack, Old Navy, the one gap brand that is not relying on influencers right now, they're on the outs. The gap and Athleta are loving the ROI Return in the meantime. on influencer. Now, a word from our sponsor, Robinhood. Okay, so Jack and I got into the news business with our previous company, Markets Now. Our goal was basically to democratize financial news for our generation. Cut the jargon, talk about the profit puppy. So when we first connected with Robinhood, there was a chemistry there. We were doing for financial news what Robinhood was doing for the financial system. Robinhood was democratizing finance for all, and it started by eliminating trading commissions and building a beautiful app. Remember, we had the same color green, so... The green was destiny. Destiny, absolutely. So we sold market snacks to Robinhood, and we launched Robinhood Snacks. The equivalent of proposing getting married and building a family together in just three years. Much more to come on why we're thrilled that Robinhood is our exclusive sponsor. If you're not investing in Robinhood yet, to get started, you can go to Robinhood.com slash T-Boy and choose a free stock. That's Robinhood.com slash T-B-O-Y. Certain limitations apply for a list of other fees. View the fee schedule at rbnhd.co slash fees. All investments involve risk. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC. By the way, Robinhood no longer affiliated with us or the podcast. For our third and final story of the best one yet. This feels so good to say, by the way. Doesn't it? This feels good to say. Maybe a while. We can get used to this. <laughs> but our third and final story, Steinway Pianos, it is the Cadillac of grand pianos. And Steinway is IPOing as they balance the history with the future. Jack, can we hot tub time machine this thing? Can you take us back to 1853? German immigrant Heinrich Engelhard Steinway. Hey. He made the first Steinway piano at Varick Street yeah. in New York City. Okay, the American dream, he got his sons involved. And they're still making them today at a factory in Astoria, Queens, and Hamburg, Germany. Ironically, nobody in New York City has room for a boat-sized piano. <laughs> yeah, these <laughs> things are huge. Each piano is roughly the size of like an East Village two-bedroom. But in the year without IPOs this year, Steinway just filed to IPO. Kind of a shocker. Honestly, Jack and I have not jumped into IPO paperwork in months. They're trying to go from concert stage to stock exchange. It is kind of a smallish company, Jack, right? Less than a billion of annual sales, but it is profitable. Now, we like investing in industries of the future, <laughs> which is why our portfolios are down significantly. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Steinway's obsession with history obsession. is a little concerning to us. So Jack and I jumped in T-Boy style to the Steinway IPO paperwork. And Jack, can you run some numbers for us over there? Okay, we control f this thing. We did. History, historic, and historically, those three words were mentioned 49 times in Steinway's paperwork. History, historic, and historically in an IPO document. Why? Because Steinway's past is today's prestige. Okay, Jack, you were a big fan of uh, the picture of the Green Book. The it's a film. good book. Oh, sorry. It's a good movie. It got Best Picture Award. Yes. And the main character refused to play the piano on anything but a Steinway. Jack, Billy Joel has played 80 concerts at Madison Square Garden. 80 and counting. And every time... He played on a Steinway. Jack Lady Gaga. She's Gaga for Steinway. Get this. According to Steinway, 97%, 97% of pro pianists, they play on a Steinway. That's power you can't buy. And that translates into pricing power. Steinway sells their grand pianos from $60,000 on the low end okay. to $2.4 million on the high end. Two and a half million bucks for a piano. Diamond encrusted, apparently. You'll learn how to play hot cross buns on that kind of machine. So, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at Steinway History piano? or the future? Steinway thinks they can have both. Okay, can we talk about Steinway's latest product, please? Spirio, it is a self-playing piano. We repeat, they have a self-playing piano. Now, this isn't some honky-tonk Western saloon play thing. We're talking world-class sound. 
There's no human being, though, who plays the piano. Now, you actually, you can play it yourself, yes, but if you, you don't want to, it'll play your favorite playlist for you. It is like the techiest development in piano since Beethoven's fifth. And it doesn't just self-play like the songs you tell it to. No. It connects to the cloud for something really this cool. This new Steinway piano, it lets you instantly stream a real-life concert wherever your piano is. Elton John, Sir Elton John, can be playing a live concert in London at the Royal Albert Hall. And your piano, your Spirio, your piano will play the same keys that Elton is striking at the same moment, thanks to the cloud. Simultaneously. You can have an Elton John concert in your living room if you have $2.4 million. So this is the contrast with Steinway. On the one hand, it is synonymous with history. But they're trying to build the future, too, with a self-playing piano. Jack, can you whip up the T-Boy takeaways for us over there? Tesla's first quarter profits jumped by 7x. Tesla just became a mature avocado tree. It's bearing fruit. For our second story, Old Navy, it's not growing anymore. Athleta and the Gap, meanwhile, they're loving the ROI, return on influencer. For our third and final story, Steinway is finally IPOing after 169 years. Steinway, it's pianoing the history and the future. One a penny, two a penny. Hot crossed buns. <laughs> now, time for the best fact yet. This one sent in from Savannah Westwood from lovely Orlando, okay, Florida. Okay, trivia. The first product ever to be featured on the cover of Time Magazine. This is a good trivia. This people are. This is a good trivia, Jack. It's Coca-Cola. It's Coca-Cola. Actually, this is a wild story because the CEO of Coca-Cola was supposed to be on the cover in 1950 of Time Magazine. But instead, he realized the iconic Coca-Cola bottle, which was a glass bottle at the time, was more important than any other part of the company. The bottle of Coke was more important than him, the CEO. I'm sure Elon would do the same thing. Would be classic Elon. Is that the pod? That's the pod. This is a new pod. TVOI? But it's the same pod as the old pod. <laughs> but better and different. If you haven't yet, follow us at TBoyPod on Instagram and Twitter. TBoyPod is like our new handle across everything. And if you want to grow the pod, just ask a friend. H-Y-H-Y T-B-O-Y. H-Y-H-Y T-B-O-I. Have you had your the best one yet? Thank you so much for being on this first pod with us. If you know, now you know. There we go. We'll see you tomorrow. And before we go, happy birthday to Madison Osborne over in Temple, Texas. And Kimberly Ruiz in San Diego. And Jeff Haynes, happy birthday in College Station. Happy birthday, Molly Youngins in Emerson, New Jersey. And Amanda Pierce, happy birthday in Columbia, Maryland. Happy 29th to Zach Tenbrick in Nashville, Tennessee. Noreen Nanji turning 30 over at Google. Happy birthday to S.A. Sampson in Sugarland, Texas. And Morgan Beckwith, happy birthday down in Austin. This legendary listener went from classically trained ballerina to tech executive. And Jackson and Faith, Jack Jackson and Faith, they just got an anniversary down in South Carolina. And to anyone else celebrating something today, make it a T-Bar. Celebrate the wins. This is Jack. Nick owns stock of Apple, and we both own stock of Peloton and Twitter. Yeah, we still do. Now, a word from our sponsor, Robinhood. So four years ago, we sold our company and we joined Robinhood. A lot of people asked, when did we decide that selling was the right move? So it was actually in our meeting with the co-founders. That's what sold us. Vlad and Beju, also former roommates, also met in college, also were hanging out in New York City's East Village after the financial crisis. And they just figured out how the financial system worked. So Vlad and Beju saw that Wall Street bigwigs they were getting their fees waived and they figured out a way to waive commissions for everyone else too. So we saw a big, bold vision and decided to join these guys. That's where we spent the last three years until now. It makes sense now that Robinhood would sponsor our newly independent podcast. If you're not investing in Robinhood yet, you can get started by going to robinhood.com slash tboy, choosing a free stock. That's robinhood.com slash tboy. Certain limitations apply for a list of other fees. View the fee schedule at rbnhd.co slash fees. All investments involved risk, Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC. By the way, Robinhood is no longer affiliated with us or this podcast. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. That was cool. That was the beginning. Man. That was really cool. That was, that was cool. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job.